Hello and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Uh, once again, in uh, in my study again. Um, right, okay. Uh, this afternoon, it's a, it's a pleasant, slightly sunny um, Saturday afternoon. So, well, what better time to uh, share some uh, interesting grams with you? Um, but uh, first things before we uh, before we crack on and, uh, and look at uh, what uh, whiskies we're tasting this afternoon. Um, I have to say that uh, the latest episode of the, the Whiskey Magazine is out, the uh, uh, awards edition. Um, so the um, 2013 World Whiskey of, uh, of the Year has been uh, well and truly announced. And um, well, I, I don't want to give away the surprise. You can uh, you know go and buy a copy of the magazine and uh, and find that one out. But I will say that it's not Japanese this year. Um, certainly not the uh, the Yamazaki 25, which, you know, although is you know, an, an excellent whiskey, um, is a little bit of a sherry monster, and you know, um, I think the the one that uh, uh, won the award just for me had uh, had a lot a better balance to it. Anyway, um, it's nice to see that they've used uh, quite a number of uh, of my tasting notes uh, in uh, um, in this. Uh, uh, edition of the magazine, uh, including the one that I wrote for the George T. Stag, which was just unbelievably good. Um, and I thought I um, thought I wrote a, a pretty impressive tasting note on that, and you know, they obviously agreed and uh, decided to use it. So, um, just like to say yeah, a big thank you to the, the Whiskey Magazine for asking me to be involved in the uh, World Whiskey Awards again. Um, you know, great experience, and uh, obviously gives me uh, uh, quite a few. Um, uh, samples to, to share with you, so um, that's exactly what I'm going to do this afternoon. So um, let's introduce the lineup then. Right, okay, um, as you know, um, it, for the first round of, uh, of this year's competition, I tasted uh, American whiskey. So, again, uh, as you can see by the colour of them, we're, we're looking at uh, more of them, and um, I thought we'd look at uh, two fairly um, uh, well liked and uh, well established brands, should we say? Um, I've got two samples here from um, uh, Four Roses Distillery. I mean, uh, going on from the, uh, the the episode I did uh, um, not so long ago. Uh, but this is not Four Roses. This is Bullet, which is distilled at Four Roses Distillery for uh, Diageo. Um, here we have uh, the No Age Statement, which is you know can be found in bars all over the place, it seems to be quite a staple of that. And this is the lesser spotted version, shall we say, uh, the Bullet 10 year old. I didn't know they made a 10 year old version, but lo and behold they have indeed done so. Um, these two samples, these both come from uh, the Heaven Hill distillery. Um, as you know, Heaven Hill makes you know, a huge variety of, uh, of different bottlings. Um, this one is the um, Evan Williams 1783, which I think is the the uh, sort of well, entry level cheaper cheap bottling that they do, and this one is the most recent release in the single barrel range, the 2003. Um, as you can remember, um, I've tasted both uh, fairly recently, both 2001 and the 2002 uh, releases. Um, didn't really think an awful lot of the 2001, but the 2002 was was pretty good and sort of back to its usual high standards so um, it'll be interesting to see uh, if uh, those high standards are, uh, are being still met so um, unfortunately none of these came away with a gong in the competition uh, George T. Stagg was just just far far too good for uh, uh, anything else so um, but uh, I think uh, it'll, this, this should make quite hopefully an interesting tasting so um, um, should we crack on with the with the bullet then? Right. Okay. So uh, so this is the the bullet. Um, quite often seen, like I said, in in bars and, and pubs. Um, let's uh, let's see what uh, what the nose gives us on this one, shall we? It's quite sweet, quite corny. Fat corn, oak, um, a little bit of violet. It's it's a pleasant, it's a pleasant enough nose. Um, it's it's very bourbon-like. It's nothing specifically 
intriguing about it. A um, little bit of quite herbal, violety rye. Pleasantly balanced, uh, I must say. There's no no real bitterness. There's no real sort of um, uh, burnt toffee or anything like that. It's yeah, quite straightforward, quite pleasant. Um, yeah, not too shabby, as they say. Bow then. Sweet finish. It's a nice grippy rye up first. A little bit of dark wheat. A little bit of heavy caramelised, you know, probably more molassy like um, sweet treacly notes. And it's got a good length. Um, the rye sort of comes back again at the end with a little bit of spiciness and there's a little bit of a little bit of uh, oak tannin grip. Yeah, I mean it's it's not bad. I mean it's it, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, pleasant. Um, get quite a, a nice sort of dark chocolatey note now on the finish. It's um, yeah, I mean it's 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 not too bad at all for a, a relatively inexpensive bourbon. I mean uh, you can you can spend um, uh, quite a bit more money than that and get something um, yeah, should we say less appealing? So yeah. Nice, uh, nice start of the ten, I think. No. Right, on to uh, the bullet ten-year-old. As you can see, um, another Glen Cairn bit the dust recently, so uh, back to the reserve glass. Anyway, um, enough of that. Let's uh, let's see what the, the nose gives us on. Let's see if this has got um, um, some depth, some more depth, and uh, you know, um, than the uh, the, the no-age statement. Less oak, um, more sort of herbally, slightly oily spirit. Um, less sweet, um, like I said, certainly a lot less oak, noticeable. More lighter, sort of almost sort of whiskey like nose. Um, again, we're not talking overly complex. There's a a little bit of charred oak and a, a little bit of um, sweet corn coming through now. Yeah, not ex I mean, it's not exactly sort of, you know, um, doing it for me, so to speak. Um, but, it, you know, it's pleasant. It's lighter. It's certainly got a little bit more maturity to it. A um, little bit of earthiness now, a little bit of Dunnage, but yeah, quite, quite clean, quite crisp. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's okay. Yeah. Maybe a bit of citrus now, a bit of, bit of orange maybe. Palette. Spicy rye bite at the end. Very spicy in actual fact. Again, yeah, certainly feels like it's got a little bit more rye. There's less of the the corn, although it's definitely there, and there's a little bit of wheat as well. Um, quite earthy on the finish. Again, lighter, less caramel, less toffied. Um, certainly tastes a lot more mature. You can certainly taste that. It. it uh, it has a little bit more than the uh, the one dimension of the, uh, the the no age statement. Yeah, that's pleasant. It's got a it's got a really nice rye content. Um, it's well made. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pleasant. Don't know how much that retails for, but you know, it's um, yeah, it's okay. She's a red hot 
Right, OK, yeah, then let's have a look at the first of the two uh, Evan Williams. This is the 1783. So, um, let's see what the nose gives us on this one, shall we? Quite herbal. Um, again, not a huge amount of, of oak. A little bit of, little bit of ma, um, that sort of herbally ma kind of character. Some edgy spice, maybe. Um, some sort of oldish wood notes, but. Not a lot of it. It's it's mainly sort of like herbally young spirit, and possibly sort of well, although it's been aged in new oak casks, it's certainly um, the oak is certainly not playing a particularly sort of dominant factor. It has to be said. Um, quite soft, a little bit of rye maybe. Um, again, it's 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 okay. It's it's young, it's, you know, it's, again, it's not going to set the world on fire, it has to be said, but, you know, nothing particularly wrong with it, so. Hello. Palettes are kind of a little bit disjointed, as we said. You can taste there's obviously some some young spirit with that sort of, sort of like I said, that sort of herbally mari character. But there's also some older stuff in there as well, and that older stuff is creaking a little bit. A lot of oak, a lot of bitterness. Um, it tastes a little bit tired. It has to be said. Um, you get the feeling that they've 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 basically taken some younger spirit to try and give. Give some life to some some slightly older stuff. I mean, um, I mean, I know that they do bottle a, a quite an old. Uh, it's a twenty-three year old, I think. So you know, they do obviously leave some casks aging for quite a considerable length of time, which um, runs the risk, I guess. Certainly in in um, in, in America, um, when you tend to find that sort of uh, bourbons are bottled at a lot younger age. Um, it obviously sort of you know runs the risk of becoming overly woody and bitter, and um, and I think this one certainly seems to suffer from from that. Um, I don't know how, again, don't know how much it retails for. I can't imagine it's particularly expensive, um, but you know, mm, yeah, I think we'll pass on that one. So. Um, mm. Right, and finally, let's have a look at uh, the uh, 2003 single barrel. Um, I'm guessing it was probably released, um, or bottled, I should say, probably last year, so it makes it nine year old. They do have a tendency to um, um, release it at uh, nine years of age, so um, let's see if this is uh, a 2001 or a 2002. Nice nose. Again, not particularly heavy on the oak. Lots of whiskey-like, slightly orange. Um, it's got an almost kind of sherry cask kind of spiciness, a sort of a sherry cask richness. There's a, a little bit of treacle. Some sort of dark wheaty notes. Um, touch of rye. A little bit of herbal mar. Um, it's a nice nose, actually. It's 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 yeah. That's that's nice. I like that. It's got some it's got some nice depth. Um, some sort of almost kind of dried fruit, oxidised notes. Um, yeah, that's 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 got some lovely complexity. Um, and again, not too much oak, so it's not sort of swamped by creamy fat oak vanillins, it's sort of letting the spirit come through. Mm, that spirit is good. That's nice. Hello. Oh, that's nice. 
Oh, big hit of rye. Mmm. Peppery, spicy, biting, juicy. Mmm, mmm. That's good. I like that. Again, we're not talking too much oak. The oak is all sort of, you know, nicely compliant, sits in the background, lets the spirit kind of show its thing and evolve. A little bit of treacle again, so some dark wheat. But, oh, that stack rye is just, oh, that just grips. A little bit of bitterness at the end, but, you know, not certainly nowhere near as, as, as bitter um, as, uh, as the previous one. A um, little bit of cocoa now on the, on the aftertaste, a little bit of, of chocolate. Mm, that's lovely. That's a real cleansing, sort of spicy mouthful. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. Mm, like that. Like that a lot. Right, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's sum these up. Well, okay, let's uh, start with the bullet. Um, yeah, it's, it's all right, bullet bourbon, you know, pleasant, wouldn't kick it out of bed, so to speak. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's never, like I say, it's never going to set the world on fire, but, you know, uh, for what it is, it's, it certainly delivers and is, is really pleasant. Um, the 10 year old, well, yep, shows a little bit more complexity, obviously, uh, a little bit more maturity. Um, and again, you know, I can't imagine that's particularly expensive, um, probably not as easy to find, I guess, as the, uh, as the no age statement, but, you know, certainly I think if you like the no age statement, um, worth, worth hunting down, because it's certainly, uh, certainly quite impressive. Um, Evan Williams, well, it's nice to see that uh, the uh, uh, 2003 single barrel is uh, as good um, or if not better possibly than the, uh, the the previous one. It's certainly a lot better than the 2001, it has to be said. Um, so, yep, a nice a nice cask selection there. A lot of a lot of rye, a lot of spiciness, a lot of pepperiness. Um, I've stopped tasting it now, in actual fact. Um, really, really interesting. 1785, well, yeah, kind of, I think we'll kind of forget about that one, shall we? I mean, um, although, you know, it's not bad uh, as as kind of spirits go, but um, it's it's just not quite there. It's not quite melded together. It's it's kind of you're getting all these different elements. You're getting the youth. You're getting the the, the, the slightly old and decrepit character coming through, and it's just sort of like nowhere near in the same league as a single barrel. So um, so yeah, uh, an, an interesting tasting, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, what am I going to do next? Well, I mean, obviously I've got uh, quite a few more samples left from uh, from the World uh, Whiskey Awards, and certainly I think the next the next tasting will probably be, um, or certainly the next um, uh, American tasting will be uh, um, looking at the Buffalo Trace, including the uh, the uh, awesomely iconic uh, George T. Stag. But um, for now, I think. Uh, um, yeah, this has been quite quite a, a, an interesting little lineup. So, uh, um, I guess uh, all that's left to say is uh, um, good afternoon and um, good round.